since four University of Idaho students were found murdered. And police are telling students and residents they shouldn't be concerned for their own safety. But that is hardly reassuring for the rattled community or for the victim's families who are vowing to find the assailant. Now just surface surveillance video is helping piece together a timeline of the hours leading up to the slayings. Here's Stephen Fabian. It's chilling video of two University of Idaho students hours before they were brutally murdered. Kaylee Gonzalez in the white hoodie and her friend Madison Mogan were at a popular food truck near the campus. Look, one man appears to be watching them. The time, 1.30 a.m. After ordering, Maddie sees a friend and embraces him. When their food comes, Kaylee takes a short video to post on social media, and they walk off together. Look, the man gestures towards them and then heads in the same direction. It's believed police know who he is. Kaylee's sister Olivia watched the video. Kaylee was aware of her surroundings. Uh, maybe a little overly aware, which is also why all of this is so confusing to us because Kaylee's not stupid. She's a smart girl. She's a strong girl. She's a mean girl. She's a fighter. The night began at around 10.30 p.m. when the friends took an Uber to a downtown bar called The Corner Club. It was a party atmosphere with Kaylee and Madison described as being in good spirits. They left a little after 1 a.m., and that's when they stopped by the food truck. 1.56 a.m., the girls take an Uber home. They were stabbed to death between 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. that morning, along with their friends Ethan Champin and Zana Kernodal. Very interesting how four students can be overcome by one person with a knife, not a gun. One possibility being explored is that the students were all sleeping when they were slain. The medical examiner described the crime scene inside the six-bedroom house as horrifying. It was very, very traumatic. Have you seen anything like that before? No. Police have not identified any suspects and are appealing for calm today as frightened students flee the campus. We hear you and we understand your fears, police said in a statement. We do not believe there is an ongoing threat. Investigators say the murders were targeted. It's being called a possible crime of passion. Another theory is that it's a burglary gone wrong. They have ruled out murder-suicide. Kaylee and Madison were inseparable, lifelong friends. They grew up together, close as sisters. In a statement, Kaylee's family is speaking directly to the killer. We will find you. We will never stop. The pain you caused has fueled our hatred and sealed your fate. Ethan Chapin's parents are also speaking out. There's not drugs involved. There's not some weird love triangle. We will not let this sink us or sink our kids. Because if anything, they have to go on and shine Ethan's bright light on their own. The day of the murders, the doomed friends posed for this photo, along with two other students. Kaylee posted one lucky girl to be surrounded by these people every day. A number of classes have been canceled indefinitely. One faculty member tweeting that he cannot in good conscience teach again until the suspect is in custody. Looking at enhanced video of the confrontation between two of the University of Idaho murder victims and another student at a food truck. The time, 1.30 a.m., just hours before the murders. Kaylee Gonsalves and Madison Mogan stopped for mac and cheese after partying at a nearby bar. Everybody seemed like in good spirits, nothing seemed off. And then they start interacting with a couple other people. They're waiting for their food. Now look at this. Video shows Madison pointing at a man in a hoodie who appeared to have followed them to the truck. We had the video and audio from the clip enhanced, and you can hear her using an expletive. Blank you, mister, she says. Police have already announced they have cleared the young man in the hoodie. Audio engineer Anthony Nelson enhanced the audio for Inside Edition. What do you hear in that instant? Um, she says, you. So, was there an argument? If so, what was it about? Kaylee's parents say in their opinion, some of the individuals have been cleared too prematurely. Nancy Grace, host of Crime Stories, says the victim's families are being mishandled. Number one thing you do in an a murder case is you locate the victim's family and loved ones and you hold their hands from soup 
to nuts till you get that guilty verdict. All the way. Now, do I mean hand over your file and all the intricacies of the case? H-E-double-L, no. But there's a happy medium. These families should not feel this way. Meanwhile, the focus is shifting to where the other two victims, Zana Kernodal and Ethan Chapin, were between 9 p.m. when they were at a gathering at a Sigma Chi fraternity and 1.45 a.m. when they returned home, just a short distance from the frat house. Police fear students who have the information are reluctant to come forward. News Nation's Brian Enton is in Idaho. Police told me they want to send a message out to the kids here on campus. They're not concerned about what was happening at any of these parties, whether the kids were drinking or the college students were smoking pot or whatever. They're not going to get in trouble, police say. They just want the information about where Zana and Ethan were. It's not like the students are going to come or call the police and say, I have information. I'm sure their life will be threatened if they do that. All the students knew. That's the reason the police are asking the students to come forward. They have a non-snitch policy in the Greek lifestyle. Something was happening around all these areas. Poor victims. They didn't see it coming. Just two separate targets, two separate fights. But it was all pre-planned. That's the reason I believe the 4chan article. I definitely believe it. Things are brewing up with the Sigma Chi boys and Eaton. And allegedly that night there was a fight. And David L. is on steroids allegedly. We had the Banfield stop. Many things wasn't right. We saw that in the grub truck video. We saw that in the Banfield stop. And we, obviously we don't have cameras to see what happened in the corner club. Dylan's room must be that room in the corridor because this is the living room and it's so dark. How could she see someone with bushy eyebrows? That's strange. It's a psychologically known fact that people see people's eyes first. Not eyebrows, especially, especially when there's somebody in the house, a stranger. You wouldn't be noticing the bushy eyebrows first. And she got the height wrong. Brian Koberger is in five eleven. He's six one to six two, and he just passed her by. She and BF survived. Doesn't make sense. And Murphy the dog. So that means all four of the victims were the targets. But by who? Why would Brian Koberger spend his energy on living four people if he was out for Maddie or Katie? And after he did that, why would he stay in town for another 49 days. Make it make sense. Look at how dark it was. Can't see anything. Can't see much. 
How did Dylan see all these things? Look at how dark it is. How did she see anything? I believe Eaton was found on the corridor over here. Some people say on the bed, the, social, the media sell us different news. But it was quite dark. I believe it was somebody who knew the house, the layouts, knew the students. This is how it looks like when it's dark. It's quite dark. So that would be Dillian's room and there's the stairs. I'm just trying to say Graham Koberger didn't see her. That doesn't make sense because I don't believe it happened. I believe the first thing that the Police conferences, all three conferences said in the start, she's sleeping in the first floor. She didn't see B BK, allegedly. And it, BK wasn't even there, he was outside. There's a fingerprint left on the good vibes, and there was the shoe print, the knife, and the glove outside. How come Murphy had no DNA or no blood or nothing on him? I believe this was a crime of passion, allegedly. Murphy was owned by Kaylee and Jack D. Where was Jack D that night? You couldn't have slept from He was at the corner club at 1.35. So was he sleeping by three o'clock? Quarter to three? I don't believe so. This was what was written by the air mail in the beginning, how the crime happened. Or actually what happened when 911 was called. So I leave it there for you to read it. It's very interesting. The trio of officers, meanwhile, proceed with haste to the second floor. They open the bedroom door to find two dead bodies, a male and a female. The pair was gruesomely drenched in blood, yet both their good-looking faces had oddly been preserved. Like masks. Even at the prominent moment, it was difficult. One of the young officers would later nearly wail to look at the 20-year-old pair, Zana Knodl, a grave side-eyed beauty who was a pie bait to fight, and a happy-go-lucky, tousled head, Sigma Kyberfin, Eat Hen, Eat and Chapin, a triplet from Conway, Ido whose surviving brother, brother and sister also attend the university and not consider the glow of once rich promise they have been so viciously extinguished at a high school graduation in Post Falls, Idaho. Zana had confidently written on our motorboat for the lives I will change, a word that is so beautiful. May they all rest in peace. So I don't think this was done by one person. It 
with a 21-year-old pretty Barbie doll-like sculpted features. Their long cascades of thick, streaked blonde hair falling down to their narrow shoulders. Yet in death there was one gr gruesome difference. Kaylee, it will be reported, had been hacked with a particular ferocity. It was as if a while of silent or was a silence. Are you paying attention to that? Yet in debt, there was one gruesome difference. Kaylee, it would be reported, had been hacked with a particular ferocity. It was as if her wild assailant, or was it a silence, had been intent on gouging other chunks of her flesh. May she rest in peace, sugar warming. Large punctures was how the lacerations had been described. Maddie's wounds, while no less fatal, appeared less feral, more measured, at least in comp comparison. So Kaylee was the target. They all were targets, but I believe Kaylee was one of the main targets. And this is from the airmail. Across the narrow hallway was one final door. The officers pulled it open, and at last they discovered a sign of life, a fluffy caramel-colored dog. It was Murphy, Kaylee's frisky labradoodle. He was unharmed, not mad, by even a spe speck of blood, a small consol consolation, and barely one at that, for all they had seen and were only beginning to process. Oh, my God. And this was Zana. This is how Zana was found. And eaten. Both of them were found on the second floor. It doesn't necessarily mean the crimes. We don't know if the crimes happened in the house or inside the house. Let's be honest. Because it took eight hours for the surviving roommates to summon up friends and then to call in and say someone was unconscious. And there were actually four deceased people. So that doesn't make sense at all. Seems like there was more than one suspect. Possibly, there were many others. But in the daylight, things turned frantic. Maltrison and Funk first heard from their beds sometime after 11 a.m. So, why did they call the police at 12, two minutes to 12, if they got up at 11 a.m.? What is wrong with these two girls, honestly? You got up at 11. We know that Bethany Funk and Dylan Mortensen were texting each other. Let's come out now. It took them eight hours to call the police, and guess what? Just say nine hours. Because the previous timeline was 3 to 4 a.m. that the unlivings happened. So it took them 58 minutes to get out of bed, find out what happened at home. These girls did not need any toilets, especially Dylan. She shares the same floor with Zana, let's not forget. Why did Zana want to change? Her locks or fix her locks. Did Zana have disagreements with DM allegedly because they shared the same toilet and the same floor? I 
and there were so many people that were summoned up and people that were outside that heard the yelling came inside and went upstairs to the third floor and found the girls deceased. Some people went to the second floor. Can you all imagine how much DNA how, how much DNA has been tampered there? Maybe the killer's DNA was lost in all that was going on. Many people were summoned to the house and then we had 911 who did not obviously know that this was a horrific mass murder. They just came in, trigger warning, without their kit. So imagine how much DNA was tampered with. We have Hunter taking their pulse, talking to 911. Multiple people were talking to the operator. Let's not forget. So you can imagine what was happening in that house that morning. It's impossible that DM and BF slept it through. Now we know they were texting each other. But what were they up to? Why did they give the description of bushy eyebrows? Did they plan from the start that they're going to frame Brian Christopher Cobra guy allegedly? Because this doesn't make sense. I've always said I believe Brian Christopher Koberger was called to the crime scene. I don't know for what purpose, but he was called there, I believe. He came there after 4 a.m. The quadruples happened between 3 to 4 a.m. The first 49 days, that is what we are told. And that is what makes sense. But they, I believe they changed it because they saw. I don't know. They must have seen that there's many ties to the university students, the fraternities and sororities, and they didn't want this to blow up. That's what I still believe. Brian could be involved, definitely. He could have been the mastermind of this. But I really do not believe he went inside and did this horrific crimes. So this is the airmail. This was in the beginning of the case. This is heartbreaking. This proves clearly that Kaylee was the target. This is really horrific and heartbreaking. Who would want to target poor Kaylee? Crime of passion. Interesting. You can never get over this picture. Although the Congavs say they believe that Jack is innocent, I'm entitled to my opinion. Something's not right with Jack's alibi and story. Both the Jacks are cleared out too quickly, I believe. Steve ain't joking with him. That look is like, I know what you did last summer. Just because Jack showed he had no injuries and bruises and took out his t-shirt, it doesn't mean he's innocent. Could have wore clothes that are made for such incidents so that you don't cut yourself. Jack had a lot to lose. Kaylee was leaving him with their dog. She moved on. He could have been jealous. 
Jack was following Kaylee, but she wasn't following him. She was ignoring his messages. Was that the crime of passion the police could have been talking about? Kaylee got more injuries than the rest of them. May they all rest in peace. And then I had defense wounds. I believe these are multiple people. Looks like he has a bandage on his hand. I'm not sure. I've seen him with a bandage before. Jack D used to play tennis and he was a professional at tennis so he has a strong arm. Where was he that night? We saw the picture that was taken in the corner club that was at 1.35 a.m. And we are told that the unlivings happened around 3 to 4 a.m. He lives just two minutes away from them. How come he opened a GoFundMe for his dog? And at the start, his family was trying to open a GoFundMe without the Congav's his permission. When I was researching, I came to it. And they opened it very early on. Could he have been so upset, full of rage, full of anger? Because five years, six years being with someone is a while, is a long while. Did Adam tell him something about what Kaylee and Maddie, or what Maddie told Adam? Which was, about, was it about a guy? Was it about money? What could it have been about? Is that what led to the brutal murders? Allegedly. He looked like he had band-aid on his fingers. His face looked bruised up. He looked really weird. I know many people say he was mourning. Why does he have a black eye? Was he in the fight club too, allegedly? This car is in front of Jack D's house. It's a Hyundai Elantra or Hyundai Elantra. I think it could be a 2014 or 2013, 11 to 13. Was it this car the police could have been looking for, and not BK's car? That car was seen, I believe, between three to four, because that's when they said the murders happened. You have Jack D, Jack D up there. You have the Hyundai Elantra down there. And you have the white pickup car that looked like... That white pickup was the same one that was driving or pulling up at the corner club. I definitely believe that. Who's that down says? Adam? Does look like him. If Jack D was sleeping upstairs, he could have easily jumped downstairs from behind without Adam knowing. Because Adam was his alibi, I guess. He could have been jealous. That happens daily. How many domestic violence cases happen because of jealousy or because of a partner who's a narcissistic thinking that their partner is up to something? He knew this was his final, his final chance. 
and it didn't go well. Kaylee must have said, that's it, I'm leaving for Texas. I'm fed up of this limbo that we keep on getting ourselves caught in. Another question, why was Jack D ruled out the loss? That is important. I'm not saying he did it, but for me, both the Jacks, both the Davids, the surviving roommates, many of them are quite suspicious for me. And I guess I'm entitled to my opinion. I would say it's more like an inside job, actually. Someone in the inside could have easily done a horrific crime because we don't know what what DM and BF's stories are about. In the beginning, they said they were sleeping downstairs in the first floor. And all of a sudden, after 49 days, DM is sleeping upstairs and saw a man with the bushy eyebrows, a man with a mask, surgical mask. We have the latent footprint in front of our door. We have the glove outside, three unidentified male DNAs. We saw the guys in Banfield. We saw Saeed watching some concerning pictures that look like a crime scene. Allegedly, there's so much movements going on in Linda Lane, Taylor Avenue. I believe later on, it was the inside of the house. Kaylee and Mary could have got themselves into a jam when they opened the door to get Murphy inside. Because Kaylee's sister said clearly that Kaylee does everything right. They ordered the buddy system. They came home safely and they let the dog out. So if they let the dog Murphy out, something could have happened there. In the Linda Lane footages, we heard a dog barking. I'm not saying that those footages are right at all. But the difference is with Banfield, that's why I analyze Banfield and the Grub Truck more. I don't analyze Linda Lane because Law and Crime Network and News Nation, all the mainstream networks, 